step back to the television landscape of the late 1950s, where the small screen was dominated by shows like Have Gun Will Travel. A series that transcended the ordinary, it left an indelible mark on the minds of viewers with its unique blend of Western drama and character depth. As we revisit this classic, one can't help but wonder what hidden gems lie beneath the surface of this iconic show. Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about Have Gun Will Travel that fascinate you? The allure of this series extends beyond the main storyline. Behind the scenes, intriguing details emerge, adding layers to the narrative. From the casting decisions to the challenges faced during production, each nugget of information paints a richer picture of the show's journey. Have you ever delved into the behind-the-scenes tales that shaped the making of this Western gem? Moreover, the timeless appeal of Have Gun Will Travel begs the question, what's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic series? Was it a particular episode that resonated with you, or perhaps a connection forged through shared viewings with family and friends? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, as we embark on this journey through the annals of television history, let's unravel the enigma of Have Gun Will Travel and discover the untold stories that make it a true classic. What awaits is a glimpse into the past where a Western drama captured the hearts and minds of audiences, leaving an enduring legacy. Paladin, the central character in the 57 TV series, carried a concealed Derringer pistol, a nod to Henry Derringer, a 19th century gunsmith. Paladin, residing in Suite 314 of the Carlton Hotel, was often seen with his horse, which Boone named Rafter. Over the show's six-year run, other horses played Rafter's role under various names. Boone had a hand in selecting the name Rafter. These details added depth to Paladin's character, from his choice of weaponry to his equine companion, enriching the series' narrative. Paladin, the enigmatic protagonist of the show, remained shrouded in mystery, including his real name, a detail that was never unveiled throughout the series. However, the character was notably recognized by his distinct attire. Initially garbed in a rich midnight blue outfit, which beautifully complemented Richard Boone's blue eyes, the costume transitioned to a black ensemble early on. Despite this change, references to his attire as the man in black persisted in the series, regardless of whether he appeared in blue or black clothing. Moreover, the series showcased an interesting crossover in its 11th episode, The Colonel and the Lady. Parts of this episode were filmed using sets from the renowned series Gunsmoke. The Long Branch Saloon underwent minimal redecoration to stand in for a saloon visited by Paladin in a Nevada mining town. Additionally, shots featuring townspeople walking the streets were borrowed from Gunsmoke, intertwining the visual narrative of the two iconic shows. This unique blend of mystery surrounding Paladin's identity and the interconnection between filming sets of popular Western series added layers of intrigue and depth to the narrative of the show, contributing to its enduring appeal among audiences. In an intriguing twist, the series title had a hyphen, but Paladin's business card did not. This small detail became a quirky distinction for the enigmatic protagonist. However, one of the most captivating episodes, Penelope, offered a contemporary spin on Homer's Odyssey, embedding a modern cowboy tale within the classic narrative of a man's return and his wife's longing. This episode, a departure from typical Western storylines, showcased the show's versatility and creativity in reimagining timeless tales in a new setting. Amidst the show's legacy, a controversial anecdote emerged from Maureen O'Hara's autobiography, Tis Herself. O'Hara claimed that Richard Boone and Peter Lawford faced arrest in 1952 at a gay brothel during the filming of Kangaroo. This alleged incident, if true, was hushed up by the 20th Century Fox studio, creating a veil over the personal lives of the actors involved. These lesser-known facets add layers to the legacy of the series, highlighting both its innovative storytelling and the complexities behind the scenes. They contribute to the multifaceted nature of a show that remains a landmark in television history, captivating audiences with its blend of traditional Western themes and inventive narratives. Paladin, the iconic character of this renowned Western series, wielded an 1-873 Colt single-action army revolver, a 7.5-inch barrel in 44 or 45 caliber. This distinctive firearm became synonymous with his persona, accentuating his enigmatic nature and skilled prowess. Meanwhile, an interesting facet lies in the show's origin. 
Contrary to the norm, the radio adaptation featuring John Daner as Paladin emerged after the television series gained prominence, offering a unique reversal of mediums. However, what truly adds a unique flair to this series is the contribution of Gene Roddenberry, the mastermind behind Star Trek. Among the 225 episodes, Roddenberry penned 24 scripts, earning acclaim, notably securing the Writers Guild of America Award for Best Original Script in 1957 with Helen of a Virginian, enriching the show's narrative depth and ingenuity. These elements, from Paladin's iconic weapon to the show's unconventional evolution and Roddenberry's remarkable scripts, collectively shaped the enduring legacy of this classic TV series. Paladin, the enigmatic protagonist of this iconic series, carried an aura of mystery, particularly surrounding his name. Throughout the show's run, his real name remained undisclosed, adding an air of intrigue to his character. Interestingly, in three Have Gun Will Travel novels, Paladin was referred to as Clay Alexander, a departure from the series' deliberate concealment of his true identity. His business card, featuring the telegraph address Wire Paladin, hinted at a time when long-distance communication was limited to mail and telegraph, reflecting Paladin's era and methods of contact. This detail led some fans to mistakenly assume that Wire was his first name, further shrouding his true identity in mystery. The symbol of a knight chess piece on Paladin's holster and card symbolize his self-image as a knight-errant dedicated to righting wrongs. His affinity for dressing in black, akin to a black chess knight, contributed to this image of a noble warrior seeking justice. The name Paladin itself has roots in early European terms like Paladino and Palatine, signifying a heroic champion fighting for a noble cause or a trusted military leader relied upon by royalty. This deeply embedded connection to knighthood and military leadership spoke volumes about Paladin's character, adding layers to his enigmatic persona. This adoption of the name Paladin is further elaborated in Have Gun Will Travel, Genesis giving insight into the character's evolution and choice of identity. The series' portrayal of Paladin as an enigmatic, nameless figure with a strong sense of justice and a knightly demeanor captivated audiences, leaving an indelible mark on television history. As we bid adieu to our journey through the captivating tales of a certain iconic TV series from yesteryears, it's time to reflect. Have you found resonance in the gallant adventures, the intriguing characters, or perhaps in the enigmatic allure of its setting? Your personal connection might hold within it a trove of cherished memories, untold tales, or even profound musings sparked by its narrative depth. Whether it's Paladin's unwavering resolve or the magnetic pull of the Old West's mystique that captured your imagination, I invite you to share your thoughts. Your recollections and insights add vibrancy to the legacy of this timeless show, elevating it beyond the confines of the screen. Let your voice resonate amidst the echoes of this remarkable journey. Engage with your reflections, your fondest moments, and the threads that connected you to the essence of the series. Your story, your perspective, enrich the tapestry of reminiscences that surrounds this remarkable piece of television history. Thank you for indulging in this retrospective excursion, for lending your thoughts to the tapestry of recollections. Your presence and contribution make this collective voyage all the more enthralling. Until we meet again in the realms of shared nostalgia, keep those cherished memories close.